Welcome back to Hoopsville. I'm your host, Dave McHugh. I'm here at Stevenson University, home of the third annual Hoopsville National Invitational Classic. So, of course, I am joined by head coach Gary Stewart, getting ready for the tournament. We'll talk about that in a little bit. This is also going to serve as our Hoopsville Corner interviews. We're going to talk to each and every head coach here when they are uh, involved with the Classic. And, coach, first and foremost, third annual tournament coming here to Stevenson. I know you uh, like the idea of putting this together when it began. Did you expect to have almost a consistency, 10 teams now in the third year. It's happened really, really fast. Um, uh, we've got a lot of good things, a lot of really, really um, energetic, bright people behind it uh, that work diligently all year long on this tournament. Uh, but to have this quality and this uh, depth of teams this soon um, is really remarkable. You know, a number of teams this year are either going to be talked about in the top 25 or respected enough that they certainly are always in the conversation. Chicago, Wittenberg, WPI, Randolph, Macon, Mary Harden, Baylor, not that far removed from making a championship appearance. And plus, other teams that are kind of on the rise, the Gwendolyn Mercy's out there. Of course, Cabrini comes back. Everyone wants to see Aaron Walton Moss. Nice mix of teams this year. Yeah, I'm really excited about the. Uh... The, again, the depth and the quality of teams, uh, the diversity in the field is, is really extraordinary when you think about the different regions that they represent, the different conferences they represent, um, high-level caliber basketball in different ways. You're going to see some really good half-court play, you're going to see some people that go up and down, uh, you'll see some people that will zone, you'll see some <laughs> yeah. man. so you're going to see the full gamut, it's going to be a really exciting beat. Don't want to leave out Catholic, who came in in the first year and of course shocked everybody by going 2-0, knocking off top 25 teams along the way. Um, you guys, of course, position, you, you get uh, two good teams to face off against, Wittenberg and then Chicago after playing uh, Covenant and Cairn to start the season. What are you expecting from your two games this weekend? Well, this is really a nice uh, weekend to uh, judge where we are. It's a good barometer um, for us moving forward. Uh, we have conference play looming. Mm -hmm. um, so um, Wittenberg, obviously, the all-time winningest program in the history of Division Three basketball. Uh, that's going to be a, a, a monumental challenge. Uh, Bill Brown such an extraordinary coach, so we'll certainly have our hands full. And then uh, Chicago out of the UAA, um, uh, really, really good um, uh, depth in, in their rosters is uh, going to be challenging. And obviously, another really, really good coach in Mike Brown. And of course, for me, I always find it interesting you're tapping into two couple nice SOS uh, locations for you with those two conferences. Uh, mix of games, you got four on Friday, or sorry, three on Friday, four on Saturday, and then three on Sunday. This is going to be a bit of, a bit of a busy weekend as well. Football team successful, going to have an ECAC bowl game, big open house. Almost maybe in some ways the way you like it, to have it busy, maybe more attraction to the tournament too. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Yeah. Uh, uh, our football team has had a terrific year, and that culminates with a bowl game this weekend. Uh, so we're excited to host that, and uh, uh, we're going to have our biggest open house in the history of the school. So uh, that's another um, uh, event that we're really, really excited about in, in, in Hoopsville. Um, so it's going to be a, a, a full gamut of, uh, of things on the campus, and, uh, and again, uh, I, I think it'll be an exciting weekend for all. Shook the rust off with Covenant. Uh, good game for the first five, ten minutes of it. Then you guys started to steadily pull away and win it. Karen, not much of a challenge, a little bit early, but not much in the overall scheme. Now you get those two tests with Wittenberg and Chicago, and then you talk about that conference looming. You've got kind of a ramped up start to the season almost. Yeah, we do. Um, you know, I'm one that doesn't get ahead of myself in one game at a time. Right, exactly. Uh, so uh, my fixation is on Wittenberg. But uh, uh, we're, we're going to have a difficult conference, and uh, we know that going in. It's uh, extraordinarily well coached. It's got some talented student athletes, and uh, you throw that in the pot. <laughs> uh, and it's a rigorous exercise for uh, uh, a couple months. But, uh, but we're looking forward to the challenge. You guys picked number one in the conference. Uh, obviously, you couldn't pick for yourself. But uh, you guys picked number one. Interesting situation with the conference this year. E-Town now officially is left and joined the landmark. Alvernia, who's been a threat, may kind of be more middle of the pack. You're, there's been many who say that Widener may be the team to watch coming out of here. Messiah has always been tough. You never know what to expect from the rest. And even Arcadia could, could kind of creep up and be battling for the top spot. This year's kind of not a hodgepodge, but really showing the depth of this conference now. You know, it'll be very, very difficult from top to bottom. Uh, I don't put a lot of credence in uh, preseason <laughs> sure. uh but uh, uh, I think there's a number of teams that can play at the top of the conference. Uh, very, very difficult venues to win in. Again, extremely well-coached conference. So uh, anybody that comes out of this double round robin uh, at the end of uh, February will have done uh, uh, 
uh, good work uh, because it's, it, again, it's a very difficult conference. Just missed making the NCAA tournament last year. Heartbreaking, really, on a buzzer beater. Uh, against Alvernia to they advance on you guys and miss out. I know that's left a sour taste in everybody's mouth, at least on the team. You want to be in that NCAA tournament. Is it NCAA or bust this year? Is that kind of the mentality, or is it just do the best we can and we'll, and we'll you know cross that bridge as it as it comes? Yeah, we we certainly have to uh, uh, work from the edict that we need to improve, and and uh, that the season last year showed us that there are a multitude of different areas that we needed to to get better in and address and. Um, hopefully we can move the full, uh, program forward, and, and that's uh, our next evolution. I think we look four uh, seconds away from that. Yeah. So, um, hopefully we'll, we'll have an opportunity to play for uh, uh, postseason play this season. This team might surprise a few people. I think you know you certainly lost some players to graduation, as every team does. Maybe not players that people thought were coming back. But then you added some talent. Man, having watched the first couple of games so far, you've still got that outside shooting threat. You've still got that inside dominant threat. And maybe from guys no one would expect. This team seems pretty deep and wide-ranging. Yeah, it's, it's no doubt our deepest team, and uh, so that's exciting for me because um, we've had some limitations in some areas, but now we can uh, put some quality student-athletes in all five spots, and um, we can sustain an effort. We can sustain the consistency that's needed. Um, uh, you're going to get worn down uh, during conference with uh, uh, a limited rotation, and we saw that... Uh, at times last year where we got caught or we had to have specific guys uh, and extend them to 33, 34 minutes. Uh, I don't think we're in that same boat <laughs> this year. Yeah, Christian Roberts, of course, guy leading the way uh, at the point guard, really, essentially. He's been the catalyst, but the great thing about him is he seems to be more than happy that if he scores, great, but he's willing to dish it out. And again, depth. I've watched five, six, seven different people be able to put up numbers. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, uh, that's the way we built it, uh, where we could have a uh, combination of, uh, of athletes that uh, can score and score in a variety of different ways. And uh, it doesn't matter who it is, it just has to be a person that's seen in uniform. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're going we're gonna to continue to share the ball and, uh, and take what, uh, what's open, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, those opportunities will provide great success for us. And quickly, how important is home court? Well, I think it's important, but uh, the good teams win everywhere. Sure. And um, so uh, you certainly have to protect your home court. And if you want to play in the postseason, um, you have to really put a crooked number up on your home court. Uh, uh, but you also have to go on the road and be able to, to win in, in difficult places. And you're certainly going to face a lot of those in the conference play and in non-conference action. Appreciate you coming on, as always, as we get ready for the third annual Hoopsville National Invitational Classic. As you know, as always on the Hoopsville Show, I always give the guests the final word. Any final thoughts you want to share with those who may be tuning in? Well, Dave, um, like always, uh, I'm very appreciative of your help. Uh, we've got a, a long weekend ahead of us, and, <laughs> and you've worked diligently to, to uh, help make this tournament what it is. And uh, with the backing of Stevenson University, we've got extraordinary leadership here and, and very fortunate to be able to put this on, and I'm very excited about it.